discussion today is titled The Elephant Vanishes and it is uh, set, you know, like all stories it's set in a specific uh, time and place. Uh, this is set uh, in the jungles around uh, these poor. Uh, the speaker today is uh, Dr. Sushut Jadav, who is an old friend. Uh, he is uh, he's trained at the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences uh, many years ago in, in the dawn of time, as it were, and now practices uh, in uh, University College of London. Uh, he works with uh, the homeless uh, mentally ill uh, in London, uh, but that's not all he does. He's deeply interested in uh, cross-cultural uh, influences on psychiatry and uh, what this entails. And he has worked extensively uh, on the animal-human interface. So without further ado, I will hand over to Sushrut uh, to speak about uh, how the elephant vanishes. Sushrut. Okay. Um, the title of this particular talk is inspired by a short story written by Haruko Murakami, which is about an elephant in a zoo, who <coughs> gradually starts shrinking and shrinking and disappears. And no one knows what has happened as a result of that. So, the whole story is based around how is it that a huge elephant can just vanish from an enclosed space in the zoo. And if you are interested, you might want to look up and read his story. Uh, I have a few disclaimers. One is that uh, some of the photographs of the people and the subjects who I've worked with have given their consent. Uh, to be photographed and to be shared with audiences, but with a request that it may please not be distributed and uploaded on the social media. This is about their dignity and this is about the ethics of work when we work with people who are at the very margins of the country and perhaps also in many ways uh, at the margins of society. There's also a video clip that I will play which is being filmed by our collaborators who are NGOs working in Northeast India. And it was their request again that <coughs> this not be uploaded and widely disseminated. But if it was to generate awareness about the problems that are taking place, they would be most grateful that it is shared. So thank you in advance for appreciating these sensitivities. I know this is a mixed audience and I'm wary that it's possible for me to lapse into social science vocabulary and dense academic concepts. So please bear with me and my apologies in advance if that becomes difficult. Maybe during the discussion I might be able to clarify some of those issues, some of the terminologies and some of the uh, buzzwords used within anthropology, particularly medical anthropology. But two important concepts here at the very start that I wanted you to think about is the thesis is really about how the clinic erases people's suffering. When I say the clinic, I don't mean an actual physical clinic, but clinicians who perform the activities both within hospitals and in the community. Um, and that in turn produces a stranger in the clinic, the product of that encounter and the construction of the suffering results in something that is really strange. But connected to that is uh, Lacan's concept of the gaze. Lacan was a French psychoanalyst and his idea of the gaze was the sense of being gazed at and the anxious state that comes with the awareness that one can be viewed. And the psychological effect of that awareness is that the subject loses a degree of autonomy upon realizing that he is a visible object. Now this concept was used a lot uh, by people, particularly during feminist therapies and feminist theories who talked about it. And subsequently the concept had been used by many sociologists who worked at state power and uh, surveillance. It's only in recent times that uh, Lacan has in some ways been able to uh, sensitize mental health professionals who are interested in social <coughs> sciences. And some of this might become evident as we go along further. 
And the last concept here is about something called nominalization, which is actually a term used within social linguistics. And it is the idea of turning nouns into verbs. And the reason I say that is because sometimes turning a noun into verbs allows us to appreciate better the vectors and forces that generate those particular categories. So in my work on the streets of London, I don't use the word homeless, I use the word homeless. And the moment that term is used, it helps one to understand the vectors and forces that bear upon people that generate the homelessness. And when you track these vectors further and further away, whether they're in India or in rural parts of the country or in large metropolises across the world, these vectors invariably end up with international treaties, agreements and GATT alliances. Um, and that helps us understand how ecology is not something to do with just one particular small place, but it's depending upon our frame of reference, ecologists can expand as much as we wish to, to understand how suffering comes about. The margin in the center is a very commonly used term, and I know this might be very patronizing to say, but you know, if you see these two circles, the star, the center of that circle is at the margin of the other circle. So at once we have multiple identities. We can be central in a particular context and we can feel marginalized in another context. Depending upon the kind of people we are with, our gender, our ethnicity, our caste, our social class, our professional discipline, that can shift. And it's important therefore that one can't be viewed and understood without the other. In many ways the, the margin is a very powerful space but because without the margin there can't be a center and vice versa. So we co-constitute each other.